Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. In just a couple more days, the Ryzen 5000 series processors, which were announced by AMD last month, will hit store shelves, assuming that AMD will hopefully have enough supply to go around. Obviously, whenever there is new hardware coming out, you can expect reviews from the tech press to come out at around the same time. Sometimes it could be up to a couple days before release or it could be the day of. It looks like NDA will lift on the morning of release day, so probably 9 a.m. Eastern on the 5th. Reviewers will have received these chips a week or so before, of course, as they'll need time to do their testing. As for me, I'll be buying my 5th gen chips the same time as you guys, and will be doing my review later on in the month, but I am hoping to get my hands on a Ryzen 9 5900X, and I will be comparing it against the previous gen Ryzen 9 3900X, Ryzen 7 3800XT, and Ryzen 5 3600, as that will give you guys a whole overview as how each CPU in the different tier stacks up against the all new 12 core Ryzen 5th gen CPU. But I mean, until I actually get the processor in hand, this is all just pre-planning. Anyways, like I had mentioned with many reviewers around the world having these new CPUs in hand, doing testing and benchmark runs, it's also very likely you'll start to see some leaks surface on the internet including scores and results for the new CPUs, and that's exactly what has happened this past week and the previous week. I've actually made a couple of videos already last month where I shared some scores from the Ryzen 9 5900X and Ryzen 7 5800X, so if you haven't checked them out I highly recommend doing so. As for the Ryzen 5 5600 it looks like some users have actually already somehow obtained the CPU and I'm not talking about like reviewers breaking NDA There were some benchmarks posted from various CPU testing programs like Cinebench, CPU-Z, and Passmark One of the first results posted was by a user named Tomaz on Twitter and he showed some pics of their Ryzen 5 5600 processor Along with that they had posted a screenshot of their benchmark run from CPU-Z and here we can see the Ryzen 5 5600X score 642.7 points for the single core test and gets 4813.7 points for the multi-core score which definitely isn't bad especially for the single core score. When we compare their multi-core score to say a Ryzen 5 3600 or 3600X which scores around 4000 points then we're looking at a 20% uplift and compared to a Ryzen 7 3700X a last gen 8 core part the difference is actually about 16% in favor of the 3700X but remember it has two more cores and four more threads so for a 6 core part that is definitely an impressive score. Also this new 6 core part would easily decimate a first gen or second gen 8 core Ryzen CPU which definitely makes this Ryzen 5 5600X a compelling upgrade for anyone using those older Ryzen CPUs. Furthermore, what makes this even better is just how much faster the CPU is compared to all the previous gen Ryzen parts and even current Intel parts in terms of single core performance. I ran a CPU-Z benchmark a while back when I was covering the 5900X leaks and I got around 537 for my single core score, which when compared to this new Ryzen 5 5600X, we're looking at an improvement of 19.5%. When compared to popular Intel parts such as the 9900K or 10900K, we're looking at a 10% lead, which is also impressive considering higher end SKUs such as the 5900X or 5950X, which are advertised with higher single core boosts, will have higher scores. Of course, those Intel parts are overclockable and can reach around 640 points, but that's when you're pushing like 5.2 or 5.3 gigahertz with a really high end CPU cooler, and at that point, the CPU has the same power draw as your high end GPU, which is quite obscene. So it takes a lot to get there. I'm glad that with 5th gen Ryzen, AMD continued to focus on improving single core performance as it's still very much crucial. Yes, programs and games are starting to take advantage of multiple threads, but many still rely on one dominant single thread, and if your single core performance is poor, then your performance isn't going to be as high as it should be. Now with these high single core scores, there should be no doubt in anyone's mind that in regards to performance in this area, AMD are definitely ahead of Intel now. It may not be by a huge margin, but it's still impressive considering where they were a couple years ago and in regards to this kind of performance that is. Now high single core performance isn't the only key to having high frame rates in games. What also matters is latency, and this was also addressed since all the cores in the CCD have been unified as one CCX that have access to a larger pool, 32 megabytes of high speed cache instead of this split 16 megabyte cache pool for each four core CCX. As before, if a core had to communicate and relay information onto a different core from a different CCX or CCD, this would incur a latency penalty which would have a negative impact to gaming performance. 
Adding on to the leaks, the author of the popular benchmarking utility, CapFrameX, actually posted a screenshot on Twitter of the IDA64 memory latency test with a Ryzen 9 5950X, which got about 62.6 .6 nanoseconds, which is quite a bit lower than what your typical Zen 2 16 core part would get. Usually it'd be around 68 to 70 nanoseconds with decent timings. Whereas this result includes dual channel memory that's running at 3600 megahertz, which is fine, that's usually the sweet spot, but those timings are are quite abysmal with my 3900x running at 3666 megahertz and timings at 14 16 14 28 which are a lot tighter than those timings i get about 65.2 nanoseconds so just imagine how much lower it'll be with a memory configuration with tight timings like my kid. Actually, you don't have to imagine that because on YouTube, there is another channel called Lawrence Tim who also got a hold of a 5600X and Rat and Ida's cache and memory benchmark where this user is actually using a memory kit with tight timing, similar to what I have. So when they ran the benchmark, they got around 54.4 nanoseconds, which is significantly lower, lower in a good way that is, but lower than any of the previous gen Ryzen CPUs. That that is almost Intel territory because really good Intel parts which are tuned can get into that sub 40 high 30 nanosecond range but different architecture and all that so it's not directly comparable but like I said this is excellent and this is probably a huge reason as to why you'll see a big boost in gaming performance now I'll leave a link to Lawrence's video definitely check it out if you're interested because he does go through a whole bunch of other various benchmarks so in combination with high single core performance and lower latency, this is why these Zen 3 based CPUs are being promised as the best gaming CPUs. And I believe on release day when you guys see the reviews come out, I wouldn't be surprised if you see AMD ahead of Intel on average in gaming scenarios. I'm not expecting a huge difference, but just enough to sway away any last bit of potential sales Intel could have capitalized on as high refresh gaming was really the only scenario they had left as a selling point. But now I don't see absolutely any reasons whatsoever to by an Intel part. And I'm sure AMD are aware of this too, which is why they weren't afraid to bump up the prices on these SKUs by 50 bucks, even though it did make some people mad. Moving on though, and another user over at the Linus Tech Tips forums, who goes by the username Jumper118, had also gotten a hold of a Ryzen 5 5600X CPU, and they too had posted some benchmarks showcasing some intriguing results. These were results from the popular Cinebench software, which are commonly used to measure CPU performance. And don't worry, I'll have links to all these results in the video description down below so you guys can and check them out for yourselves. Now this user had their 5600X actually overclocked all core to 4.7 gigahertz, which is quite impressive because the 5600X was introduced with an advertised boost clock of 4.6 gigahertz. However, the boost clocks that AMD advertise are just for single core boosts under ideal conditions. Whereas this user has had all six cores running at 4.7 gigahertz at just 1.256 volts, which is quite high compared to your typical all core overclock from a Zen 2 Ryzen 3000 processor. And that's not even particularly high in terms of voltage. Along with that, the user was also asked what cooling solution they were using. Then Jumper118 mentioned it was just good old air cooling. This definitely does bode well in terms of overclocking potential on these new Ryzen 5000 SKUs, and this could be due to various reasons. The major contributing factor being that since these Ryzen 5000 parts are being manufactured on TSMC's 7 nanometer node, the same one as the Ryzen 3000 parts, the process has been matured to the point where these yields are significantly better in terms of quality than what we saw with early 7 nanometer products. I mean, this was in indicative when AMD re even released the 3000 XT parts which had slightly higher single core boost. Therefore with the Ryzen 5000 CPUs the silicon quality should be much better thus allowing for better overclocking. And this does get me a bit excited because I did miss the old days of being able to dial in an all core overclock and seeing how much faster you could get the CPU. One that could net me potentially higher performance all around whether that's single core or multi core performance. With the way this user has configured their 5600X essentially they'll be doing just that. Whereas before, what say a Ryzen 9 3900X, if you wanted to configure an all core overclock, you'd have to settle for something like 4.2, 4.3, maybe 4.4 gigahertz if you got lucky, but then you'd be sacrificing quite a bit of single core performance, which can be detrimental to gaming performance. So there were some trade offs and compromises you'd have to endure and, you know, have to put up with. With BIOS updates, overclocking and fine tuning got a bit better, where whether that was through precision boost overdrive or CCX overclocking, but Honestly, I'm an old-fashioned kind of guy when it comes to overclocking and just prefer to dial in an all-core multiplier, set a voltage, and just leave it at that. Which is why I'm running my 3900X and 3600 bone stock because 
While I could dial in an all-core overclock, I'd be leaving a bit of single-core performance on the table. But just imagine if you could take a 5900X, overclock all cores to around 4.7, 4.8, maybe 4.9 GHz, you'd have crazy high multi-core performance while still maintaining the best single-core performance, the best of both worlds. Obviously, we shouldn't get too ahead of ourselves here and wait until the parts are out and tested, but you know it is fun to think about as an enthusiast. Now, in regards to the scores the user posted, the figures are quite impressive. For the Cinebench R20 results to 5600x scores almost about the same as what a Ryzen 7 3700x 8 core processor would get and is of course much higher in terms of single core performance. I guess this is another reason why AMD didn't feel the need to price the 5600x lower even though I've seen 3700x's go for like $280 uh, US which is quite insane for an 8 core part of that caliber but because they're giving you almost the same multi-core performance and also give you much higher single-core performance and reduced latency, which for gamers is the more important factor anyways. Do I like that they're increasing prices? No, but you know I can see a justification for it somewhat. Now, they also shut off the 5600X running at 4.95 GHz, all core in Cinebench R15, and here the CPU gets a single core score of 272, which is ridiculously high. And remember, this guy was using an air cooler, so I'd assume if he had a more higher end water cooler, he'd be able to reach that five gigahertz mark. But I mean, at this point, that really shouldn't even matter as it's already so fast. There were some other tests they posted as well, and there have been more benchmarks that have been surfacing across other sites from other various users. I'm not going to go over every single one of those tests, as then this video would just go on forever. I just wanted to share and comment on the ones I found most intriguing. Also, do keep in mind, while the results we saw are impressive, we still gotta wait for actual real-world testing as well, but, you know, that, that shouldn't be too long from now. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.